Hey everyone, it's Elisa, and I know I'm looking a little rough. I have like an overhead light, so the shadows are kind of weird. I'm also just now bouncing back from coronavirus, so I'm just trying to get the ball rolling, and it's been it's been going. So here I am. Um, I wanted to make a video today because it is a request for in the whole like relationship advice um, category that I also do on my channel. I've received a lot of inquiries about winning a girl over, making a girl more attracted to you, earning a girl's trust, anything that involves kind of either pulling a girl in or anything that you think you're struggling with in regards to, I guess, strengthening your bond with a female. So I have gotten a lot of questions about this, um, not really requests, just as much as just like comments or like little messages. And I wanted to make a video. I don't have anything prepared. I literally, like, didn't write anything down. I don't even know what I'm going to say right now. But I feel like my best advice comes out when I'm just kind of put on the spot. So I'm just going to kind of talk to you about this. And I'm going to try to make it... Everyone who watches my videos knows that I try to make my videos as broad as possible. So I, t I get a lot of requests from people. I'll read the request to the camera. And then I'll respond and give advice. And in the beginning, like years ago, when I used to do this, I would just answer their question and kind of make it black and black or white. But now I'm just trying to gauge it to more viewers. Like, even though this is someone's request, I want to make it more versatile and have people of all ages and all genders and everything enjoy it and understand it and be able to apply it to themselves. So I will be kind of covering as much land as possible. So... Um, this is specifically for a girl, like trying to win over a girl's heart, girl's trust, how to strengthen the bond with a female. Um, this won't work the other way around, at least from what I've seen, what, I, what I've experienced. Um, there are very different processes, and um, most of the time they're different processes, but for the most part, um, I am a girl, and I have been won over from guys, and I've also been repelled by guys so i can speak on the subject i've also been binge watching married at first sight which if you haven't seen it i think season nine is on netflix right now but all the other seasons are on hulu and it's such a good show and i like it because i really get to see the psychology behind like marriage and the way people think and it's really cool so um i'm just gonna kind of go over what i've experienced and what i've noticed about winning over girls and it really just depends because now nowadays especially like with everything that's going on some women are so tied up in like this um feminism which is nothing wrong with that but this like independence that they don't need anybody but they want somebody but it's very hard to find somebody who can fit into that little box that they're leaving open for a, a partner or a companion um, but then there are other girls who are just so different and who just, like, are opening of everybody and who want a relationship and are more, uh, they're not as, I guess, picky with who they want or what they want. So if you have a specific girl and you want to help me understand who she is, I would love to help you with that. But for the most part, I feel like women generally all kind of want the same thing, and that is to be understood um that's the first thing I think of when I think of what do all girls want in common and not even just girls but anybody what we want to be understood we want to be able to know that we're being listened to we want to be able to know that if we have a complaint or if we have an issue or if something bothers us you will be there to not only hear us but to also listen I think listening is definitely the most important thing that a guy can do initially to kind of make us realize that, hey, you know, maybe he would be a good partner or even if you are dating and you're trying to keep the relationship going and like maybe strengthen it, listening is always a good way to um, increase that. And not only listen, but ask follow-up questions, you know, ask questions and then follow up not only like in that moment, but weeks later, months later, hey, you know, you told me about like your grandma and how she got put into a home. Look at my rash, it's literally flaring up. I don't know why this happens. I get stress rashes a lot, and I don't know where they come, well, I do know where they come from. I just didn't think they were coming back. Um, like, so hey, you told me your grandma was put in a home a few months ago, like, is she doing any better? And then she'll be like, whoa, well, like, you actually remember that? That's really cool. Um, like I said, I have nothing written out, so I'm just gonna like literally talk off the top of my head. 
but I feel like definitely listening to us is one of the most important things because everybody likes to be listened to. It makes us feel like you actually care about the details, you care about what we say, even when we're out listening. Um, my boyfriend is actually really good at that, but he accredits it to just having good memory. So like, he'll say something and I'll be like, whoa, like, I don't even remember telling you that. Like I told you months ago and he's like, I just have really good memory. I'm like, yeah, but you also like love me. So that's also pretty cool. So it's really good to be able to um, know that he cares enough to not only remember those tiny details, but to bring them back up, follow up, ask questions. So I definitely think that's a really good thing to do. Um, I think another good thing about a girl, and some girls are different, but I definitely stand by this. We don't want somebody that's like too clingy or too, I guess, uptight, too like on our butt about things. Just the one thing that I can't stand, and I actually lost a friend over this, is a guy who is just overprotective, clingy, just always on my butt. Like I remember there was this time, it was my freshman year of college, there was this boy that I went to high school with and he had a crush on me. He's had a crush on me for a few years at that point, but I never liked him. I was never attracted to him. I thought he was cool. You know, we got along great. We hung out like in social settings with friends, but we never, I never was interested in him, but he always was interested in me, which is fine. Like it never really got in the way of our friendship. But um, after my high school relationship ended, he decided he was gonna like try to move on in, which like, I knew it was gonna happen, but I knew nothing was gonna come out of it. And I remember my really good friend, she, her uh, grandfather passed away and he lives about two hours from here. And so I decided randomly just to pack up my stuff cause I was in college at the time. I didn't have any classes on Friday. So I decided to drive down on that Friday and I just went to the beach cause they lived at the beach or he used to live at the beach. but. My best friend was there to help him move out or to not help move out because he was deceased. I'm sorry. I'm like really tired right now. I took my sleeping pill. So I'm trying to get this video out before I literally knock out on my desk. But she was trying to um, unpack or I'm sorry, repack her grandfather's house and kind of get everything out slowly because, you know, he passed away and they needed to get everything out because of, de I don't know, deadlines or something. But she asked if I wanted to come help. So... I did. I decided to go and help. But while we were at the beach, we also wanted to go to a club because that's what she wanted to do. It wasn't a legit club. It was like a teen club. You just like go out for drinks. So we spent the whole day cleaning up the house, packing, mopping. But she's like, you know what? I want to I want to go like dance. I'm like, cool. So we went to go dance. Um, literally lasted for like a couple hours because everything was closing early. Um, and then this boy was literally in my messages like, I can't believe you drove there like so last minute like don't you have homework to do don't you have things you need to be doing for school like and i literally was getting so furious because it's like he was my dad and i have a parent matter of fact i'm so lucky i'm so blessed i have two parents two parents that love me so much and he was really trying to audition to be a third parent I was not having, even like with girl friends, like female friends, if they helicopter me, I lose my mind. I can't stand friends. I mean, listen, if I'm like drinking a lot or if I'm really, really tired and friends are checking up and be like, hey, how are you doing? You good? Yeah, no, I love that. Like, please check on me, be a good friend. But when it comes to the point where I don't text you back in an hour and you're like, excuse me, like, why didn't you tell Like, helicopter friends can't stand it. This boy wanted, he liked me so much that his plan of execution was really to win me over by playing this, oh, I can't, I just care about you. I want you to be safe. No, not when you're telling me that I shouldn't have left my college town to help my best friend whose grandfather just passed away. He didn't like that I was going to a club. A club. Because there would be men. He's like, you just got out of a relationship. The last thing you should be doing is going into a club like let yourself heal like let yourself grieve and he didn't and then i was like oh by the way like i literally came here to help my friend pack up her grandpa's house after i said that he literally was like oh my god like i'm sorry i'm like yeah whatever i blocked him literally just like maybe two years ago i unblocked him like i couldn't stand so that's my point of this whole thing don't helicopter a girl don't try to pull that parent card. It's okay if you care somebody, but you can care from a distance. That's the one thing I love about my boyfriend. He's super, super chillax about everything. Um, he He's like, if I'm acting weird, if I'm acting strange, like maybe he'll helicopter lightly, but 
to the point where I need that. If there's ever something wrong with me, God forbid I'm dead on the side of the highway, he would probably be the first person to find out. But he doesn't stay in my grill, especially if I'm going out with friends. He'll literally back off because he doesn't want me to be on my phone. It's, it's, there's a good amount of caring and then there's like that line that you cross where you're into helicoptering hel helicoptering and i have friends now whose boyfriends are like this and i don't know how they do it but there's literally a line and to me it's pretty black and white for others there's like a range but don't be a helicopter let the girl do her thing if she's going out with their friends if she's drinking if she's not texting back don't blow her up i mean maybe she just needs time to just chillax like guys always vent about how they need their space and their their time girls are the same we need our time we need our space i will say a lot of the girls though are a lot more at least from what i see on tiktok girls are like really petty they're like eh. when you ignore him for like six hours because you want him to like send you a text about how much he loves you like i literally saw something like that I'm like, that's so toxic and manipulative like if you're dealing with someone who plays these games on you maybe it's not good that you pursue them but if you do have a good woman on your hands or a good girl on your hands definitely keep doing what you're doing but um so that's my next thing is just be respectful be mindful and don't be her parent don't be an overprotective possessive boyfriend but just be a friend like <laughs> i don't know why i was about to say thank you because nobody said bless you wow i'm losing my mind um another thing is to be very respectful and mindful of our boundaries. A lot of girls are really, really weird about physical touch, about um, emotional boundaries, like when to move to this base, when to move to this base. A lot of girls are super, super weird about that. I know I for sure am. And it's really nice if we have a guy that respects that. I know that's such a duh, like why, like, no, boys and men and anything that is a human can often cross these boundaries where they make a, a female very uncomfortable whether it's verbally or anything like knowing when a, is the right time to call her hot versus beautiful versus like sexy versus knowing when to gas her up if she sends you like a picture in her new jeans or if she's bought a cute sundress like you would be like damn you look so good be like oh that's a really beautiful dress like, you look so like there's times to kind of know when to say what or you can gas her up if she's wearing a sundress. You can do whatever you want as long as you're not making her uncomfortable. As long as you're not um, doing anything that you feel like you might be pressuring her into doing something. Like if she's made it very clear she doesn't want this or this or this, then don't try to push for this and this and this. I feel like a lot of females like having that say. They like having that control over when to um, execute what step physically, like sexually in a relationship. So I definitely think... That is important. Um, I literally love, I mean, I'm not single anymore, but when I was single, there was nothing I loved more than a boy who really just knew how to not be a creep. Like, I know that sounds like the bare minimum. That's literally all we want. Like, if I'm Snapchatting you and I'm sending you selfies, I don't want you to be like, damn, like, can I see more? Or like, <laughs> I'm gonna go take a shower. What about me? Like, aren't you going to bring me? Like, that's that, that was a joke. Like, people do joke about that, but it's actually happened. So there's, like, ways to kind of be flirtatious, but then don't be a creep. And don't, because that, I hate that. I really, really hate that. Like, most of the time, women spend so much of their day or their week getting hit on by men and being made to feel so uncomfortable that we don't want to have to go home, open our Snapchat, and have that continued by a man that we thought we could trust or that we thought we could um, de-stress with. You know, we turn to you for a laugh, for a giggle, for a company. We don't want to have that harassment going on because it's it sucks and it puts you in that pool with them, so don't do that. Um, like I said, I'm just naming these off the top of my head. I guess just really take an interest in her hobbies and what she does. Especially in married, married at first sight, there's been a lot of cases where, like, the couples, they're married all of a sudden, and the guy's like, I would do anything to make this marriage work, like, I really love this, I really like this girl, I'm sure I can learn to love her, and then the girl's like, you know what, I just, like, I'm not attracted to him, I don't know what it is, but then weeks later, she does start to fall for him, this has happened so much in the show, 
and I've, I've really been like studying why that happens and it's because the guy is genuinely such a good guy he lets her do what she wants he gives her that space but he's always there when she needs him he surprises her with dinner and a movie or flowers or a homemade gift or a drawing or a trip somewhere he respects her boundaries like a lot of the time the guy he tells the producers like yeah like i really want to have sex with her i want to consummate my marriage but i'm gonna take it at her pace so far on marriage at first sight married at first sight i haven't seen that vice versa it's always the girls that are making them wait but you know what that says something so um they've always been patient and have waited and I feel like it's just those cool guys that just go along and they also do her hobbies with her like they learn about her they learn about what she likes to do and they do it together and then the girl starts to really develop this bond and honestly I have experienced that just the other day you know my boyfriend he's an engineer um very very smart literally a math genius like freakishly high IQ like I don't know what his parents did while <laughs> they were pregnant with him to like make him freakishly smart but whatever it was I really wish my parents would do that to me because I'm the opposite like I literally have a learning disability called dyscalculia where I struggle with basic math algebra when I say basic math I mean I've barely I barely can comprehend basic math so let alone anything else math algebra anything that requires numbers even counting um anything that literally requires critical thinking in a number it's like it's like dyslexia but it's with numbers but it's not just like oh i get a two and a five mixed up no it's like if i have 50 cents and you give me a dime and two quarters then how many pennies would i need to have that sit? like just anything that requires like crunching i can't do it i'm the opposite but i love to paint <laughs> I always say my hobbies are useless they're never gonna make me any money which isn't entirely true I've actually I mean, I've made okay money selling my art so far but um my boyfriend knows that I love painting I love art I'm a very creative person so he decided for my graduation present to make a reservation at an art studio like one of those painting with a twist so we went and <laughs> we actually had a really good time it was such a wonderful thing like um and that really made me realize like you know he's such a good person like for the, to the fact that like he can't even draw a stick figure but he not only like spent the money but put put aside the time um everything to let me have this experience with him it's awesome and I feel like that's also what I've seen a lot in Merida for sight is like the guy will really build his hobbies and his wall not walls but build his life around this girl's to where like he's given her space to be herself but he also lets himself be a part of her life with her hobbies, her friends, her everything, but also letting her still have that independence. And that is what I've noticed makes the most successful couples. The couples that literally have their own independence, but also function so well together. I've never seen a couple that was so clingy with each other that ever turned out to be okay. Like they always end up having some kind of burnout some kind of breakup because it's so like detrimental i don't believe in having another half i think that you're a whole and they're a whole and together you're two holes there's no halves i used to have that mindset and it's not a good one to have so i definitely think my whole point for this one is really enjoy this girl for what she is you know if she's nerdy and likes to read maybe go to books a million and uh like send her a picture of a book and be like hey have you read this like what do you think or what do you recommend like out of the blue or if you know she likes sushi but you don't like sushi maybe go to a sushi place and have her suggest something like i don't know anything where she can have an input and kind of exert her opinion that's awesome girls love exerting their opinion girls love really being able to have that power because i feel like a lot of the times a guy will really try to have all that power um in every sense like sexually physically uh I don't know so it's really nice when it really is more 50 50 but i was saying that at the beginning they're like feminists or whoever who um uh, want a lot more power in the relationship which is totally cool i respect that but there's also like those more conservative values where like the guy should pay for everything and which i don't really believe that i'm like it's a nice thought to have because the lord knows i would save a lot of money but at the end of the day you know it is 2020 we've we fought for all these rights so we might as well use them like i don't mind paying for half the bill i don't mind whatever 
Um, I don't really know what else to add, I guess. Really just making time for the girl, you know, if you know she's having a bad day, stop what you're doing or don't. I mean, it just depends what you're doing. If you're <laughs> taking a test at school, maybe don't just like walk out of the testing room, but do what you can to kind of be there for her, show her support, always reassure her. I know a lot of girls, the basis of who we are, we really do love reassurance because guys are very, they know what they want and they know what they're thinking. They don't really double think things that much. Sometimes they do, it just depends. But from my experience, they don't. <laughs> and girls are kind of the opposite, you know, I'll have a thought and I'll be like, wait, but what if like this or what if that? So it's really nice to have a guy to really listen. Like I said in step one, listen to us and kind of learn our love language. That's an important one, our communication language. And that also goes with the last point I said, where they learn who we are as people and they kind of build around that to um, not only receive our styles, our communication styles, our love styles, um, but also input into that. So my love language, it's very, it cha it's actually changed. I took it again the other day and now it's acts of service. So um, it's really, I think my boyfriend's is the same one actually. It used to be different, but we've been together for so long that they've kind of become the same, which is totally normal. It's totally okay for that to happen. But it's important that you really learn their love language, their communication style, what makes them a partner, and then feed into that. So receive that and then feed into that. If you know that your partner's love language is receiving gifts, then maybe don't uh, send them a super long text saying, hey, I love you a lot. You're really pretty. You're really cute. You have a nice butt. No, if their love language is receiving gifts, then you need to be like, hmm, maybe instead of words of affirmation, I'm going to give her a gift. And maybe a gift will be like, this isn't what I'm using it as a metaphor for, but like a jar with a bunch of notes in it. So this jar, uh, this is actually a whole jar of wristbands of all the events that my boyfriend and I have ever been to. Um, we have music festivals. We have a bunch of tail, 90% of these, or maybe 80% of these are tailgates from school um the state fair and then we also have like a keychain from when he went to dc poker chip from when he went to new orleans there's a lot of stuff in this jar but like i think when he gave me this my or no he didn't give me this i made this but he would always give me the wristbands um it's really important that you feed into their love language and then reciprocate that so give her a gift that tells her everything that you want to say but in her style so I feel like that's the most useful information that I can give you for someone who is either your girlfriend or who you want to make your girlfriend or for a friend that you want to strengthen your bond with um of course all the advice would be the same just different levels of exertion so bottom line listen to her hear what she's saying but really listen follow back up with it be respectful be mindful of her boundaries uh, <clears throat> excuse me ask her about herself do things for her you know even if her love language isn't receiving gifts it's still nice to get a coffee every now and then or to be told that we look really pretty in a new lipstick that we didn't even tell you that we bought but you noticed because you pay attention or um you really put time aside to learn our friends and our family uh, the things that mean the most to us whether it's our dog or our friends and our family you learn them and you really you don't just make her a part of the your life but like everything she comes with um you know like i said from mary to first sight all these couples that at first didn't work but then learned to work was because they really took time aside to build themselves as individuals and then come together as people. So if you're a guy and you're trying to win a girl over, it's really cool that like you're, you want to do this, but also remember that you are your own person. So if you like bodybuilding, if you like playing guitar, if you like painting, if you like uh, running track, be sure you keep maintaining that and also show her that you have so many good qualities. You know, a lot of guy, a lot of the time a guy will undermine himself and kind of put everything aside to, I guess, win over a girl. But it's really important that you keep pursuing what you want. I know some of the coolest guys I know, the reason why they're in the forefront of my mind right now is because I think of them 
because they have this very distinctive set of hobbies. Like one of my guy friends, he's really good at bowling, which I'm like, that's awesome. Another guy I know, he applied to a Disney internship, which is super cool because I don't know a lot of guys that apply to Disney internships. Uh, at least the Disney college program is what I'm referring to because I did that one. Um, just they, they, they really build on themselves as people. They really keep going for everything that they want in life and then still try to have girls on the side, like, or a, a girl on the side, like a girlfriend or a relationship. So keep doing what you're doing, but also learn that, you know, especially now in the dating world, you should really do your best to not only be a boy for this girl, but to be a man, you know, what can you bring her? Uh, are you ready to commit? Are you ready to, uh, that's a whole nother part that I don't want to get into, but intention, you know, if she, trust issues aren't just song titles, they're not just poems, they're real, you know, some people really do have such defeated trust, and if you want to get this girl, or do something because you think she's hot, or because your friends are like, no way you can do it, or because you think it's a challenge, and you're in it for the wrong reason, you know, make sure you really see a future with this girl, depending on how old you are, it doesn't need to be marriage, if you're older then that's really cool but if you're like in high school or whatever then maybe not like marriage quite yet if if so cool but i don't know who's all watching my videos right now so i can't say but make sure you really have a good intention you have uh only the best intentions for this girl and that you don't just want to waste either of y'all's time you know if you do try and you do fail that's so normal you know if things didn't fail then i'd still be with my first boyfriend who now has like kids and I don't even know what he's up to. Wow, okay. Very weird. I know he has kids from Facebook, but I don't... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but things do fail, and that's totally okay as long as you try. And from every failed relationship or attempt, there is a lesson to be taken out of it. So be respectful, be mindful, be a man. Uh, be what you think she needs, but without helicoptering her. So a girl, a woman is completely independent on her own. You know, we don't need men. We, or at least I don't. And I hope none of my female viewers, if you're watching this, I hope you don't need men either, but they are nice to have. You are good supplements to our lives and we only want you to fulfill us and to not fulfill us, but to add more, not to fill our glass all the way to the top because that's our job, but to like add whipped cream on the top, you know, it's, you're supposed to make things, we are independent people, but we want another independent person to share that life with and to share these experiences with. I know I'm using my hands a lot. Um, I've had a lot of caffeine today, that's why. Uh, I feel like this is really just, I don't want to say common sense because it's really not common for everybody. You know, I've been helping people on YouTube for years, so it's kind of ignorant for me to say well, it's just common sense like it's really not like some people really have a hard time understanding these kinds of concepts but i think as long as you start off with the fundamentals be nice tell her she looks pretty ask her what she's doing if she's busy with friends family don't blow up her phone but check in every now and then ask her if she wants to do something super cool like i love driving theaters but i can't remember the last time someone has asked me to go to a driving theater like it's really good to kind of catch a girl off guard in a good way. Like, wow, did he just ask me to go to a drive-in theater? I remember the first time my boyfriend ever asked me to, and I use my boyfriend as an example because I'm in a happy relationship and I want everybody else to experience this too. The first time my boyfriend ever asked me to go on a date, he texted me and he said, he's from uh, Florida, so he didn't know, because I, he moved to my state to go to school. He said, hey, have you ever been to the zoo like 15 minutes from here? I'm like, yeah, a couple of times he's like good because i'm taking you there tomorrow and i was like wow like he really took control of that and i was like that's awesome <laughs> like i love that so he wasn't being like pushy though or forceful like well i guess some could argue that that was but like that's just his his sense of humor he's just like yeah good because we're gonna go like he's like sassy sometimes but um catch this girl off guard in a good way you know like i said with the whole lipstick thing like hey is that a new shade lipstick or hey did you color your hair did you get your nails done ask her what she likes to do do it with her tell her about your hobbies tell her about your family your passions because that'll make her realize that you're also a whole person you aren't just in this because all your eyes are on her but because you are a human with hobbies and people and family and loved ones and you want to just include her along with that you know, you're not just here 
to be here, but you're here because you think that y'all should be in this together. Like I said, I tried making this video as vague as possible for viewers who could potentially be between the ages of like 10 and 60, like I don't even know. And for also viewers who are trying to win over a friend or a girlfriend or how to strengthen a relationship. I'm trying to make it so vague to where the most main points can fit, you know, be nice, be respectful, ask her about her day, don't be pushy, don't like, these are the most main things that apply to everybody. Things that I feel like any female would agree with me on. But if you have a specific, uh, like, situation, like, your girls may be a little different or, uh, your situation strange then of course let me know i'd love to make a video about it but this is just a video to put the information out there that i do help people on youtube i've been doing it for years and that i hope that this video was helpful for you and it wasn't let me know but that's pretty much all i'm gonna say i'm already at half an hour and i did take my sleeping pill right before this started and it takes about 30 minutes to kick in so i'm about to go tap out thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe follow me on instagram please my uh, username is Elisa Flom. It's in my description. And then I also have an art Instagram where I sell commissions. Uh, I'm a studio artist. I do paintings and drawings. I'm actually working on this these drafts right now, but they're in an the, early process. I'm also, I always advertise my Venmo and my cash app. So those are also in my description because I just graduated with my degree and I got student loans. So feel free to help a girl out. All right. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.